today we're going to get back to something just a little more fun. We got a couple things to cover. Um, as you know, we're building an alcohol saw, 372, and there's some don'ts to that. There's some do's. The one thing I am doing is running a white school forge piston. Uh, the things to cover on these, the reason I'm doing it is for strength. Lightweight. This is a 52 millimeter piston, big bore. And they're really a nice looking piston. Bicycle does good stuff. It really does. Um, it definitely is a leg up for weight. Okay. We have places in this piston we can shed more weight yet. Uh, we're going to trim the corners in here like we do. And we're going to get rid of a little more weight. This is right at 96 grams. That's, that's pretty light. Uh, we'll probably get it down to about 94, 93, 92 would be beautiful. Uh, the lighter I can get this, the more horsepower the saw can make just from this. For one reason, it takes horsepower to keep the darn thing rolling. It absorbs some of it. Okay, you're cutting a fine line. Is it worth it? No, not normally. This is not... A saw that we'd normally build for anybody. This is, I'm old. I can play. And I want to. And I want to share it with you what I do. Good or bad points to it. There's, for everything that you gain, you get losses or problems somewhere else. Everything. I mean everything. So, that's covering this piston. I like the way... I was going to do this build with a 50 millimeter. I really was. But I had several 52 millimeter cylinders here that uh, I could use. So, that's what I'm doing. It's going to be a fun, fun build. Um, it might be heartbreaking. They blow right up on the bench. I'll warn you that. It takes approximately 5 eighths more alcohol than it does gasoline. You've seen that we put the carb together. Uh, we have to make sure that we're getting ample fuel through this. Uh, it is easy to tell. It, it does the same thing. You read your plugs. You read your plugs. You can tell. You can tell by how it's reacting where it's at too. Not enough fuel. They get where they get caffy. And you get too much fuel. They get logy. Just just like gasoline. We will be using an additive in alcohol so you can see it burn. If you ever, it's rare for a chainsaw to catch on fire, even with alcohol, just, just, but you cannot see it burn. So that's that's where I'm a little leery of it. Uh, I, I watched that happen at the drag strip. Guy got burnt pretty bad. Now, I won't go into details. You probably have already heard about it. But part of this build, what we're doing is we're raising the compression by filling the combustion chamber. Now, there's other ways to skin a cat. I can take 50 thousandths out the base, 50 thousandths right out of the uh, top of the cylinder, right to squish band. That raises compression good. I could go in a 52 millimeter Use a 272 piston, cut it a little more, and uh, end up with a mega dome and all this. That's not the direction I chose to go, go in this. You can do all this. That's not the way I wanted to do this one. Um, we're going to wreck, I'll tell you right now, and you're going to see it right here. We're going to wreck three cylinders. We're going to wreck three of them before we get it right. And I'm willing to do that. Um, it's... It's beyond test and tune. Um, Two-stroke theory, every little while there's breakthroughs made. Now, I want to explain something to you about what's been going on as of late on these two-strokes. I had the opportunity to take a fairly new head off and uh, see how it looked. The, the combustion chamber... Uh, size has been actually increased in a lot of these bikes 
but what they've done is reshape them. The chainsaws haven't caught up to that. They have not. No, they're old school. So what I'm telling you is things I'm going to show you and we're going to do together isn't from chainsaws, it's from bikes. Uh, you can change the shape of your combustion chamber. The original bikes, they look like a half an egg, just a round little pocket, and it was absolute straight, sharp edges, and that's what they thought kept the air-fuel mixture centered in the piston. It kept it from going down uh, uh, past the rings. That's what they thought. But what they were doing is creating a hot spot right in that area. Any sharp edge creates a hot, hot spot. Okay, the next design of that, and this this was slow. We've seen this over 20 years, or, or maybe even longer. Um, what you've seen was instead of being so deep in a combustion chamber and so small around, they shallowed them up, and they tapered and broke that edge going to the uh, uh, squish band area. Okay, and they found that what it did is it, re it it made a better swirl is what they is and this is it went this way but it also rotates but it doesn't rotate as much as it does this way because you got two transfers but it does rotate okay they play with angle plugs straight plugs everything else for the longest time bikes had an angle plug well some of them they angle one direction right toward one transfer which it some darn things run you can't say it's wrong the traditionalist in the bikes way back thought that you had to fire your exhaust or your plug towards your exhaust and fire there and burn toward the intake. And there there was experiments done where that they were firing in the opposite way and all kinds of crazy things. Using multiple plugs, uh, none of that really took. Um, in this one, we're going to stay with a straight plug, straight down through, no angle, we are reducing by a little more than half the uh, combustion chamber depth, okay? From the, where the plug is, it's going to come up slightly, and then it's going to rotate, come back up again. It's going to have three angles, and then the edge broke. We've learned by playing with these in racing two-strokes uh, in bikes, that that is kind of a better way to fire one of these boogers. And uh, so I'm going to run with that. No, it isn't applied to chainsaws like that. Uh, not from the manufacturer. So is it because the piston and the cylinder are smaller that they don't? You know what I think? They don't have to. They already know how to make an, enough power for that saw. It still has something that lasts a long time. That's what they know. Uh, yeah, I've been doing yard work. Oh, my goodness sakes. It got hot sooner than I thought it would. Been mowing, and we had a high wind. I liked the way it jumped from one thing to another. Just thought it hits me, might as well say it. And it took a lot of limbs out of the trees. So I was picking up limbs all morning, and, and uh, we got the yard mowed and one thing to the other. Uh, area beautification has to have about once a week generally I like to take a little time and do it so I decided well I don't have time to tear a, into a saw as hard as I want to right now we got a 372 apart that's cool but what I'm going to show you is when we raise that compression we're getting actually the ability to draw more air through the transfers in a different way, okay, because compression starts when the uh, ring clears the top of the exhaust roof. We're going to run that number up pretty big. We're going to exceed my 160 degree rule by a ways, okay, and the only way I can do that, compression is king. you got to maintain that compression, but with alcohol, you need a lot more compression to do gasoline. Now, I can run 110 octane and run a little less compression and be just fine. Regular gas. Burn rate. 
The higher your octane number, the slower burn rate. This is the way it works. If it has a short area from the top dead center, fires and the exhaust opens, if that area is short and considerable, what happens is it doesn't have time to burn all the fuel. You're throwing a lot more raw fuel back out, and you're disturbing that mixture that's coming back in the saw. You'll notice, guys, those of you that run the 110 in a stock saw, a lot of times you slowed your saw up. Whether you'll admit it, it still smells beautiful, though. I love the way it smells. But you slowed it up because your burn rate's wrong for your saw. You don't have enough compression to make a more volatile explosion. Alcohol is easier for me to use in this case. Uh, I am going to build a regular gas carburetor, and we're going to run it on some 110 VP or Cam 2, something like that. And then I'll call. We're going to just see, hey, what what should we really be doing with this type of saw? Now, the guideline on this, I want this saw on the outside to remain as stock as possible. Other than there's going to be a plug sticking straight up. I can't do nothing about that. That's the way it's going to be. That I'm willing to deal with that. I want to be able to fall timber with this saw. I want to be able to cut firewood. I want to buck logs. Now, I want to talk to you about my thoughts on this transfer opening timing for the saw. I've already showed you, by using a ring as a reference in a previous video, the last uh, uh, How to Degree a uh, Saw video, it's all covered right in that. The piston comes down, it clears the exhaust roof, Part way down, the transfer is open. That means the most of the exhaust pressure has got out. Transfer is open. Start shoving fuel and air up. Finish the blowdown by shoving the raw air fuel mixture. Shoves the fuel into the muffler. Piston hits top dead center. There's a bounce back. It comes back in. That's why you need a little bit of back pressure. You don't get that bounce. It just kind of dies. You got to have a little back pressure. Uh, that's why I haven't found this style muffler to make any any horsepower at all. They just look way cool. We're going to turn this into something, I think, by reducing the size of these pipes. It's, it's an experiment. Uh, I think two half-inch IDs is what's going to be the answer. Uh, flow is important in your exhaust. A huge flow is what you want. But you got to have the back pressure to back it up. So what I'm doing with this saw by making a smaller combustion chamber is it allows me to hit some pretty low numbers on when my exhaust timing starts where it opens and I don't want to crowd my transfers up to match it let's say that you're at 104 degrees stock and let's let's just let's just call it uh, 30 degrees difference. Uh, let's just, just pick a number. So 30 degrees later, the transfer is open. Well, if I raise that exhaust roof to 94, 92, 90, whatever, they transfers open months later, don't they? Uh, it's a tendency to want to raise them transfers to whatever you take off. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't like to see more than, don't crowd it more than 20 degrees, 22 degrees. I like to see 25 or better. I'll tell you why. I want to give that time to get the exhaust started out cleanly. The more RPMs your saw is running in the cot, the more time it takes that air to actually get finished moving. So it's almost like when you supercharge an engine, you're putting a massive compression. You'll find out that the old small box Chevy guys used to find out circle track, they liked their timing locked at 38 degrees on their distributor in the day. Well, then you start running a blower on alcohol and you get way high compression. You found out six degrees is better, way slower. Let it really explode instead of leading it. The more efficient an engine becomes, the less the timing number on your ignition needs to be. This is the way it is. Uh, a lot of circle to get track guys have learned 24 degrees around here is working out for short track, less than that for long track. Uh, 
at age of saws, I learned this from many avenues, and I try to keep up on two strokes, on what's really going on. I watch the guys that are winners, and I, I, I want to know what they're doing. That's the ones I follow, you know. And some of the factory prototype stuff is pretty stiff sometimes. But we're getting into the end of the factory two-stroke bikes. So I'll give you a little shot, if I can, of where we're at. We are filling this with high temp, this cylinder right here in front of me, with uh, high temp JB well. That's 2,500 degrees or something. Do we think that's going to stay in there? I know one thing. It's sure bonded. I've been putting this in over the last week in layers. Okay. I need this because it's real easy to take out compared to, you know, than if we'd used aluminum. And I'll probably end up building a head. Actually, just biting it, building a head, doing what I want. I want to know what my combustion area needs to be. And how to maintain my squish. This is what I want to know. So this is test number one. But where we're at is I'm going to try to show you to the best of my ability. Hopefully you can see that. We filled that a good ways. And you can see the transfer timing. Compared to the exhaust timing. Now, I've got no way to know if you've actually seen that or not. So, if you didn't, just believe me. This is where we're at. Um, radical difference. We are filling and eliminating the decomp. But I'm not going to do it initially. One step at a time on this. You know where we're headed. We're going to cut our crank. So, turn it into a, an assemblance of a blower. We're going to pull some compression off of the cylinder, because you know we're going to get too much, and pump that straight to the bottom of the crankcase as a timed event to help fill the transfers. That's why I know slower transfer timing for me is going to be fine, because I want to give that time that, that it builds that pressure, and when that opens, it, it's a big burst. I want to keep fuel in atomization. Um, the transfers are going to be very rough. Now, something I'll show you that I normally do is I normally take this area right off, right even. In cases, I'll clean this up a little bit on each side right here and here. I'm going to take that, see that rib down there? See that rib? I'm going to take it down to there, okay? And then... Our center rib that's in these right here I'm gonna take half of that right out okay and the reason I'm gonna do that is I want more volume now we've learned with the bikes that volume in your transfers is king okay that builds your torque it works like a tunnel ram. It's big in the bottom coming out of the case. But we don't have huge uh, upper transfers where it goes in above the piston. We like it to go slightly more above it than stock is what we want. We want it in a spray bar effect. Okay, be like this, you know, but like this. That's what we want. Um, some people make it out like, well, gee, the minute you touch that stuff, you, you don't know where that's really aimed. Oh, yes, we do. We know exactly what that's aimed. And I'm going to show you when we get to that point how we do this. There's two methods. You can take a smoke machine, like we use for our band, just a fog machine. And you can put that on the four nozzles. You can block two off at a time. You can check your primaries. You can check your uh, secondaries. You have to seal that up. It's... It flows out and it lets you know where it's meeting. But the best way, after you get all that done, the nicest way is with water, honestly. You, you put a spray bar in there, okay? And you let air pressure siphon that water into a mist, okay, out of a bottle. And then when you do that, you can, and you have to seal that up also, you have to. And 
you set that at a conservative poundage where it just is nicely picking the water up, but it lets you see where that's aimed. Okay, so now you play with that until you get them aimed exactly where you want to. That's what you do. What I'll tell you, old or new saws, anything, doesn't matter. Dirt bikes, doesn't matter. From the factory, you think, oh, I don't want to touch them because I'm going to screw that up. You are all over the map. They are. They're not even clearly, not only that, but they don't flow the same from side to side in some cases. This is how bad it gets with OEM. But you could take the OEM and make it better. You really can. There's uh, been much done with bikes, very little with saws. So anything that I'm telling you I'm going to do, just go talk to a motocross guy. It's dead serious. Just, just go talk to an engine builder or bikes. And you can look, what do you, a chainsaw, hmm, well, that's kind of neat. Oh, yeah, we've done that for years. But the physical size of the transfers is everything in the power of your saw. It really is. Um, can you take and do just your transfers and nothing else and make a gain? I doubt it very much. You have to have your intake and exhaust timing, targeted numbers, amplify that with your lower transfers, okay? Bigger the better in some cases. Uh, the saw we just produced uh, for Hogan there, that 268 or 266, that's in the mail. They'll be getting that in a few days, five, six days maybe. Um, monster transfers, remember that build? They were huge, huge. So, uh, four, four times bigger than chainsaws normally are. There's a few out there that already know all this. Good for you. This isn't nothing new. Can you make good power without touching transfers? Oh, yeah. Watch your intake and exhaust numbers. Be careful if you're not going to move with transfers. So the, there's there's many schools of study on this. Is my way 100% right? Oh, heck no. 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 There isn't no one right. Because there's things that keep stacking up. You need to understand that when you remove material from this end and from this end and then in the middle, it's changing the dynamic balance of that, of that engine. That's what it's doing. Um, you will get, periodically, some unfavorable results. And I'll tell you what I was doing for a while, and I couldn't shake it. I was actually getting my intakes volume too big. I was, and I was lo losing the speed. That's what I was losing is the speed. Well, what it did, because coming into this intake, I got where I was hogging them right out. There is a relationship, and determined by your board stroke, how much bigger does the exhaust need to be than the intake? Okay, this is vacuum. This is pressure under heat, fairly high pressure. Okay, your intake must be smaller by ways than your exhaust. Now, does it do you good to make your exhaust volume too large? No, it does not. You lose the flow. This is what we're doing. We're trying to take a really inefficient air pump, do what the factory could have done, and in this case, more than they was willing, um, and make it more efficient. Now, one thing about it, when you start getting into it where you're starting piping these and you're getting crazy sized carburetors and the transfers and high compression and all of this stuff all put together, don't complain about your fuel consumption. It takes fuel to make horsepower, fuel and air to proper mixture. This is what it takes. So by leaning on them lower transfers and not getting too stupid with that transfer timing compared to the exhaust timing, it allows me to really pack more air and fuel above that piston 
when the transfer closes. Okay. Part of that, before the exhaust closes, it shoves the unspent exhaust gases the rest of the way out. They're low pressure now. Part of the intake charge just went out with it. And you fired. This is an interesting concept. Understand how these work if you're trying to get into the advanced stuff. You want to know what's fun right now for me. The most fun I've ever had is right now with chainsaws. And I'll tell you why it is. Uh, it's like we took this little saw right here. A lovely little 61. I will tell you that right now. It is beautiful, isn't it? I'm going to run this in a few minutes. Uh, it's going to rain. It clouded up. So maybe I won't quite die of a heat stroke. Maybe just. I know what to do about that. Lots of water. Mm-hmm. Okay, so anyways, I've been enjoying the comments. My emails that I get, I've been enjoying a lot lately. In the last few months, you guys are really stepping up and trying to work on your own saw. Josh is trying on this saw. Straight away. Uh, try. And you're telling me your successes. Email me. If you have a problem or you think something's sinking and something you did, Email me. I try so hard to answer them emails. Uh, I do get a mess. I mean, I'll more than you'd ever believe emails. I really do. And I don't get to answer a lot of comments. That's going to change here in another week or two. I'm going to be able to answer more. Um, things are winding down in my personal life to where that I'm going to have a little more time. The, I've been stretched thin, guys. I want you to know that. And uh, real thin. And... Uh, I think I'd like to be a little thinner, you know. And it's happen. It'll happen. It will. I know what to do about that. Uh, quit eating barbs cooking. It's too good. Everybody looks hungry. So, when you tell me your experiences with your saws, what you're building, what's your next project, what you found, I love it, man. I love it. You're interacting. You keep these comments rolling. Uh... No, I do not expect a lot of you guys to completely agree with everything I say. I'm just sharing my experiences. But we're doing it together right here. So we get to see what worked and what don't. There, there ain't no joke about that. And then you get to walk and run the saws. Hopefully here in another two weeks, we get to go spend more time out in the bush running power saws. That's, that's my biggest goal and it's been that for a while. But uh, let's just see how this goes. Got to get some more of these done. Okay, that blue thunder. Luke's uh, a pretty thing in it. We've been running it. Been working with it. Carburetor changes, ignition changes, everything. You remember the numbers. It was 174 or 6 or something on the exhaust. It seemed like total opening, 172 on the intake. Too much on the intake. It's too much on the exhaust, too, but that would still run. The It's a lot. When you push your intake timing too far, like that cylinder that was right out of the box, I didn't dare touch it. You can't easily put the material in. That one, the way it was cast, was just way too big. Uh, just way too big. The symptom of that is a, a bad rings will do this too a, a same symptom starts really flooding gas back and forth right out of the carburetor and a steady mess and it's doing that and it doesn't have the the, the power that that saw ha it has about three quarters and that's it not good enough so i'm in the process of another cylinder i've got one come in the other day we're going to pop this one apart we're going to fiddle with the numbers. We might fill one of these intakes or exhaust. I think the intake is a better one. We may do that. We really may. This is going to solve its problem. We are down to a, an operating saw now. We just got to get one more step. Uh, this one's been a pain right in the butt, but I won't set it out the way it is because 
I wouldn't run it. Somebody that's, it'll probably run with a stock 66 mag. Not good enough for me. I know what that sauce cable of. Thank you, people. Appreciate you stopping in. Be good to each other. Give your dog a hug for me, will ya? Goodbye.